Good evening, my people. What's going on? This is Blanc Eden, your host for Black Trending News. This is episode 21. I made it to my 21st episode. So thank you for listening today. I'm going to get right into it. Today I'm going to be talking about why was black slavery in America different than slavery around the world in ancient Egypt? Ancient China, Assyria, Babylonia, ancient Iran, ancient Greece, ancient India, the Roman Empire. I want to talk about the differences between slavery that took place in the U.S. and slavery that took place in other parts of the world and why it's so, it's still such a sensitive touch subject to talk about today. Uh, I think there's a You know, Kanye West showed us (laughs) a part of how America thinks. I don't, maybe he's not the only person that thinks like that when he said that slavery was a choice. (laughs) You know, a lot of people, including myself, was like, "Mm, you know, what are you talking about, my friend? But um, there might be a large group of people that feel that way. You know, there might be a large group of people that feel like, well, I think it's time that we get on and move on. But It just really isn't that easy. And I think it's because there's so much of our history that we don't know about and that a lot of us really care about knowing. There are some people who don't care about knowing their history. They just care about what's going on right now. But then there are a lot of people like myself that want to know where where I came from. England in 1837 had enjoyed more than 200 years of prosperity and global power. That success had been fueled by the slave trade. But within 12 months, slavery would be abolished. A new monarch, Victoria, was crowned. This should have marked the end of the story of slavery. In fact, the Victorians replaced shackles of iron with the poison of racial prejudice. Today, thousands of Britons are discovering their own part in the shameful history of Britain's slave trade. A history which is only now forcing its way back into our consciousness. We have developed a kind of amnesia about history. It's an amnesia which you can understand. It's an amnesia that comes from a sense of guilt, a desire not to, uh, not to remember the past, because to remember the past is to remember um, a troubled and uh, anxious and sometimes barbaric uh, set of realities. And I went through that part of my life, like, where do I come from and why don't I know where I come from and why do I have a last name that's different from somebody who's from Africa? Why do I have like an American last name or an English last name? Like why is my history so scattered and why is is it so hard to find? Why does there have to be a website called Ancestry.com? No offense to that website, it's actually a great website. But why does that even have to exist for us to even find out like who we are? Like why don't, why isn't there just more information easily available to us? Uh, And it's because of slavery. (laughs) That's the main reason why. So the definition of slavery is any system in which principles of property law are applied to people, human beings, allowing individuals to own, buy, and sell other people as a form of property. A slave is unable to withdraw from such an arrangement and works without remuneration. There's also the phrase chattel slavery. Millions and millions and millions of people from all over the world have been in slavery, in bondage. Between the years 1300 and 1900, close to one third of the population was enslaved. And in early Islamic states of the Western Sudan, including Ghana, Mali, Segu, and Sangai, about a third of the population was enslaved. So one in three, every one in three people were enslaved. That's a lot of people. And based on my research, slavery is class. Most of the time, it's class based on your finances. So slavery wasn't because 
and this is based on what I research. Again, the comment section is open to post respectful things that you know that you can prove. By all means, please post it. You know, just be nice or whatever. Slavery is not based on race. It's based on classism and your economic status and what you have. So if you don't have, you don't have. And you do for people who have. So basically, if you were inferior financially, education-wise, etc., you were considered lower and that would have made you a slave in most societies. What's different about the United States and the slave trade that took place in the U.S. and, again, parts of the world and brought to the U.S. was something different. So what made the black man a better, I quote, better American slave? Why was the black man an American slave? Well, based on my research, there were a few reasons. The English and the Spaniards and the Portuguese and whoever else was going around enslaving people for land and riches and money and crops and business. They attempted to enslave the Native Americans and they did. They did enslave the Native Americans. We all know that. But this was their land. So they knew how to get around. Okay, so when Europeans arrived as colonists in North America, Native Americans changed their practice of slavery. So instead of integrating their war captives into their society as they would normally do, they began to sell them to Europeans as slaves. As a demand for slave labor in the West Indies grew with the cultivation of the sugar cane, more money for the Europeans was wanted, so they needed more slaves. Europeans enslaved Native Americans for the 13 colonies and some were exported to the Sugar Islands for that sugarcane cultivation and that free money. The British settlers, especially those in the southern colonies, purchased or captured Native Americans to use as forced labor in cultivating tobacco, rice, and indigo. Accurate records of the numbers enslaved do not exist. Scholars estimate tens of thousands of Native Americans may have been enslaved by the Europeans, being sold by Native Americans themselves or European men. So like I mentioned before, there's slavery in these societies already. Slavery was not new to the European culture. European culture had slavery. The whole world did. It's just the, in, the inhumaneness of the treatment of the slaves that took place in the United States is the difference. Slaves became a caste of people who were foreign to the English and non-Christians. So that included Native Americans, Africans, and their descendants. The Virginia General Assembly defined some terms of slavery in 1705, and it said, all servants imported and brought into the country who were not Christians in their native country shall be accounted and be slaves. All Negro, mulatto, and Indian slaves within this dominion shall be held to be real estate property. If any slave resists his master correcting such slave and shall happen to be killed in such correction, the master shall be free of all punishment, as if such accident never happened. Virginia General Assembly Declaration, 1705. This is the shit that I'm talking about. This is the shit that I'm talking about. You see, this stuff, what makes African American slavery different is that this shit was written down. This shit was like declared. It's like, like this shit was documented when you write something down that is permanence that, that that's a sense of permanence y your intentions are to 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 make this law Th this is this is it's not like they just did it and uh they made this law this is a law this is a big document a declaration i quote the slave trade of Native Americans lasted only around to about 1730, which makes, again, African-American slavery very different over 200 years. 
versus about 30 years, right? 30, 40, maybe 50 years from what we know, right? Uh, it gave rise to a series of devastating wars among the tribes, including the Yamasee War, the Indian Wars of the early 18th century, combined with the increasing importation of African slaves, effectively ended the Native American slave trade by 1750. So another 20 years, tack it on on top of that. Colonists found that Native American slaves could easily escape as they knew the country the wars cost the lives of numerous colonial slave traders and disrupted their early societies. The remaining Native American groups banded together to face the Europeans from a position of strength. Many surviving Native American peoples of the Southeast strengthened their loose coalitions of language groups and joined confederacies such as the Choctaw, the Creek, and the Catawba for protection. So they had to fight to end it, like most slaveries have to be fought out. You know, we have to take lives to save lives. This is unfortunately the world. Uh, there's little known about the Native Americans that were forced into labor. There's a few myths. And even though rec records became more available in the later colonial period, Native American slaves received little to no mention. Or they were classed with African slaves with no distinction. Which to me goes again with my point that this really isn't about race. It's about class and it's about dominating. So if we just happen to want your land, we're going to kill you or enslave you and take your land. We don't give a shit what color you are because they were white slaves, they were black slaves, they were Jewish slaves, they were all kinds of slaves. So race is not, race didn't become an issue until after the abolition. After the abolition, race became an issue because now we're revolt. Now we're mad. All the pro-slavery people were mad. So now they, you know, you're a nigger, you're this, we're going to hang you, we're going to... You know, it still took a long time for those things to stop. And so, um, they're still continuing. So it's taking a very, very long time to just end all together. Just stop everywhere. You know, it's taking a very long time. Will it ever stop, you know? But that's when the, the segregation and, and all that shit really started to come into the media. Because... Now it's like, all right, well, you're not slaves anymore, so we still don't want we still don't want to, you know, conjoin with you because to the white Americans, black Americans were a disease. I have a great clip that I'm gonna play right now. When racism as such as a philosophy uh, kicked in, was uh, as a direct reaction to the abolitionist movement. The abolitionist movement driven by the, some of the leading intellectuals of the day, as well as driven by hundreds of thousands of ordinary people in this kingdom who signed petitions after petitions and presented them to the House of Lords. When the abolition movement really kicked in, in the, from the 1780s onwards, the planters had to respond. And so they, this is where you get the most virulent uh, imagery about brutal, pagan, um, bestial black people in the literature um, and in the imagery. Cartoons portraying black people as licentious and depraved began to circulate. The anti-abolitionist Edward Long wrote, the lower class women in England are remarkably fond of the blacks. In the course of a few generations more, the English blood will become so contaminated with this mixture as even to reach the middle and then the higher orders of the people. This is a venomous and dangerous ulcer that threatens to disperse its malignancy far and wide until every family catches infection from it. The Times and other magazines 
reviewing a London performance by the black actor Ira Aldridge could barely contain their distaste. The features of this genuine nigger possess much of the African character, but are considerably humanised. Owing to the shape of his lips, it is utterly impossible for him to pronounce in English. It is impossible that Mr. Aldridge should fully comprehend even the meaning of the words he utters. In the name of common sense, we enter our protest against a repetition of this outrage. In the interests of decency, we protest against a ladylike girl like Miss Ellen Tree being subjected to the indignity of being poured about by this black servant. Until the 1840s, these racial attitudes had little impact in Britain. But the advent of colonialism would turn them into opinions held in every quarter of Victorian England. At the moment the slave trade ended, the colonialism began. The flags were planted here. And the Germans and the French and the British were roaming all over here and they were firing on each other out of the various forts and so on, and across the entire continent, all the way down to the Cape. I'm sure there's other reasons why enslaving the Native Americans didn't last as long as the black man's and black woman's slavery trade did. So that was one of the things that I researched was the fact that they knew the land and they just didn't make a good slave. Uh, because they had an advantage that the black man that came from outside of the U.S. didn't have. And that advantage was knowledge. One was knowledge of the land. They didn't know what to do when they got here. They didn't know where to go. But what research says is that, you know, we can bring a foreigner into this land and have a more advantage over them. And they had an upper, upper hand. And again, disease played a role in it. And it didn't work out for them so well. So I, I know, depending, again, according to research, they had to find another way. <laughs> uh, so they headed on over to, you know, there's West Africa, there was the Caribbean. But speaking particularly West Africa, you know, there was slavery occurring already. And the type of slavery that was occurring wasn't, again, the same type of slavery that was occurring in the U.S., which was cruel and inhumane. You know, they enslaved criminals, outlaws, you know, children who were abandoned and so forth. You know, people, nomads, people who had no belonging. You know, they were the low, considered the lowest class. That's what slavery is. You know, what can we do with this kind of, well, it's very much like today's society compared to today's society with the past and how it really hasn't changed very much, except that now we have prisons. But again, it is class. You know, people who don't commit crimes are not in jail. They are able to be free, walk around, find a job, raise a family. They have a lot more freedom than somebody who's locked up. So basically, a slave was someone who was locked up kind of like today. They work for less wages. They, you know, they, they get the bare minimum. You know, I guess depending on the class of the, the prisoner, you know, there are some prisoners that have, you know, nice facilities. But for the most part, most prisoners, you don't want to be in there. Like, they don't want to be there, you know. So it's very similar. Those were, but, you know, again, there's but so many of those. I imagine that the Europeans, the Spaniards, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the white, whatever, the non-Africans that were traveling there needed a lot of slavery. So it goes back to my um, my other point that I researched. The reason why, another reason why, not to get off that topic, I'll come back to it, but was because the, I guess the royal family, but they had an agenda. They wanted to be rich, they wanted money. And they had slaves. But those slaves were born there. They were mostly Christian. And they did not believe that enslaving that type of people was okay. We can't enslave them. There were actual laws in place that protected them from their slave masters, owners, employers, whatever you want to call them. That they couldn't abuse them. They had to get some type of wage. They were, they were Basically, there were low-wage workers that had rights. Slaves did not have those rights. 
and they did not have to pay slaves. So because they didn't have to pay slaves, their pockets were fatter, <laughs> right? So slavery, you know, took place in, in London and in Europe, in the U.S., in the Caribbean, Brazil was one of the biggest uh, slave trade uh, businesses going on. It took place all over the world. And it was, for the most part, based on my research, for money. How much money can we make without putting out money? So people with money invested in the travelers that went and got the slaves. That was their investment. They would have rather invested in them to bring back free work, free labor, than to pay long-term workers because they had too many rights. They were probably like, I'm not doing that shit, you know, no. Not that's a no over here. So they had to they had to go off and find people of lower class, which would be the criminals. And um I'm gonna you know I, I, I would just think if those people in West Africa were white, it wouldn't have mattered. Based on my research, it wouldn't have mattered what race they were because they just wanted the free labor and they they wanted so in Africa, let's go back, hop over back to Africa, where there was slavery already occurring. You know, the travelers, Europeans, whites, whatever you want to call them, Spaniards, Portuguese, they all fall under the same category for me. <laughs> uh, but they started to make business deals with these African of higher classes, right? There were lower class, mid class, and higher class. Maybe there was no middle class. Who the heck knows? But there were different classes. And those classes of people had slaves. They had people waiting on them and, and, and sharing crops and, you know, whatever else they had slaves doing. But they're only the lower class were doing it. The slaves that were more than likely criminals, abandoned kids and so forth, lower class people were handed over for money, for goods, for rum, I guess whatever the Europeans were bringing over to them. They were happy to take it and trade for the lives of their people. They obviously did not care what, you know, about these people's lives. And a lot of people will say, are the Africans to blame for slavery? Obviously, they didn't value life. I mean, you, ha you have to think about this a little bit, you know, the mindset of how the value of the, there, I mean, to me, I really think it was a, it was like a barbarian lifestyle, you know, to give off your people, whether they were criminals or not, is just kind of shady. You know, it's real fucking shady, really shady. You know, all right, I commit a, even in the, even in this country, when you commit a crime, you know, they don't. You know, you have a prison to stay in, in the country and you have a sentence and you could be released and, you know, finish your life most of the time. Some of the time, excuse me, some of the time. And but back then it was kind of like, well, well, fuck, when we're getting material goods, we're just going to give our people away and we don't know where they're going. Or maybe, you know, the slave traders, maybe they lied to them. Who knows what really took place, you know, but we have to assume like, well, just a little bit. With a little common sense and go, well, these people were um, just shipped out, you know, for goods. They were bribed for goods. That's, I mean, based on research, that's what it looks like. So that's unfortunate. Uh, but the millions and millions of people that were enslaved, based on research, it was millions and 10 million people, I believe was the number I read. And well, that's a lot of criminals, right? I don't think so. I don't think all those people were criminal. Uh, I've also read that there were, you know, little deals going on. Like, look, you know, we're going to give you guns and we're going to give you whatever you need to get these slaves for us. And they did the dirty work for them, which is some con artistry shit. You know, we can't go in there and fight these motherfuckers. So you, we're going to give you what you need, show you how to use it, and you go get them. You kill your own people and give them to us, basically, which, which is some jacked up shit. Now, I don't know, you know, if that's how slavery was conducted in other countries. It probably was conducted in some other negative, terrible way, inhumane way. That's kind of fucked up, you know, to hit up a continent of people and um, teach them how to kill off their own other people or other tribes and take their slaves 
for money divide and conquer so what happened to the population of africa is this like a depopulation i mean some people call it depopulation of a continent i mean you could look at it like that in in this day and age you can maybe not at the time but in this day and age you can look back and say maybe this is a form of depopulation how can we get rid of their people and uh and then move in and then move in uh Hence, the South Africa, which, you know, I haven't done a lot of research on South Africa, but I believe there's a lot of white people in South Africa. I don't know. I mean, South Africa is a very diverse country. It's not just black people in Africa today. So, yeah, it, it makes you think, you know, there was obviously some, some coming in of somebody, right? Because there's different races there. You know, it says here that it says here that there's over three thousand different ethnic groups speaking more than twenty one hundred different languages in all of Africa. <sighs> that's crazy. That that that's 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 a lot of it's not like that here in the US. We all speak English for the most part. That's our, you know, basic language, you, you know, English. And then whoever else brings other again, other cultures from other countries then we speak that language but our primary language is the english language and our continent is probably not much smaller than africa and here is africa having over three thousand different ethnic groups and speaking more than 2100 different languages so it's not just there's a lot of uh there's a lot going on in africa uh which is probably why they only needed to invade West Africa. Uh, but I, I do believe, and this is just my personal belief, that there were slaves that weren't criminals that were taken. 10 million people is a lot of people. I don't think there were 10 million. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe there were 10 million criminals throughout West Africa. But my heart tells me that some of those people were innocent people. And they would have kept it. They would have captured innocent people for the for the material goods that they were getting just so that they wouldn't be captured it's do or die you know what i'm saying like well i'm not gonna go well we're gonna get you if we can and we're gonna destroy our own people for these goods so you know how else could we conquer such a powerful country full of resources that we want we want what africa has africa is known for being extremely resourceful so how else can we get those resources we can assist in destroying the people that live there that are probably protecting those resources and keeping them for themselves but in fact we want them so we'll take their people little by little and before you know it, Africa becomes one of us. So, I mean, that's just what I think. You know, again, that last part is just my, you know, my imagination and my thoughts on that. So that that's why the black slave was different, because they were brought from somewhere foreign, you know, and they were believed to be more controllable. I, I don't think that they were more controllable than a Native American, but the Native American knew the land and knew where they were versus, you know, the African people did not know where they were going. You know, so just a mat, you know, and then, and, and on top of that, they were broken up and sold off and broken up to different parts of the world. So, you know, they didn't care. They slapped a price tag on them and said, you know, see you later. Oh, you need a daughter, but you don't need a father? No problem. We'll give you the daughter. Our father stays here. You know, just imagine, you know, waking up one day and not having your family around. I mean, there were families on these boats. So were these families criminals? You know, think about it. I don't think that everybody that was in the slave trade was a criminal. I think that maybe a lot of them were, or maybe that's something that history tells us. But there's so many of them. So many of them. I think that they were just lower class people, that their lives weren't valued, and he didn't care about them, and they sold them off. That's what I think. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about slavery in the U.S. You know, now that I've gone over some of the slavery in the world, 
let's talk about slavery in the U.S. And also, you want to keep in mind that because slavery was a class social thing, the more slaves you had, the more you were considered royalty, the more servants you had, the more people you, it's just like a business. You know, if you have a, a company that has, you know, a hundred thousand employees, you're considered a really valuable company because you have a lot of people working for you. So it's, it's very similar in that sense. Um, I'm not comparing a company to a slave master or a rich slave master, but I'm just saying that your value is a, is a, as a king or queen or some type of royalty or, you know, hierarchy or slave master or president or whatever you were back in the day, the more slaves you had, the more respect you had. But a lot of these were indentured servants. So that is the word that I was missing. Indentured servant is that person that gets paid a low wage. They have laws protecting them. Not a lot of laws, but they do have laws protecting them more than a slave. A slave does not have that. And that's what made the black man different was that he didn't know where he was. He didn't know the language and um, they were in a foreign place. So the, the slavery in the U.S. was, again, for money and to make rich people richer without spending money. We have this black man and woman, African people from these lands that look different than us. And we don't have to pay them anything. And they're just going to work and do whatever we tell them. Uh, that is a form of slavery. Now, what made the different, again, back to my point, is the abuse and the treatment that they received. Now, yes, there were other races and cultures that received abuse and mistreatment from their masters or slave owners. Absolutely. But the extensiveness of being a black slave is very extensive. Uh, I was listening to an interview that I'm gonna play in a little bit. And the gentleman said that his mother was a slave and she would feed two or three white babies on her breast at the same time. Now, most of you would go, well, that's not that bad. That's not, you know, but yes, it is. It is very bad to watch your mother do that by force. She didn't have a choice but to raise babies she didn't have instead of you. You're her baby. But she was raising other people's babies by force, you know. Because I saw that was a tradition when I came as a child during the Christmas holidays, the church or the people would give you an apple, orange, and peppermint. Right. Is that where that come from? That's where that come from. Wow, we'd be doing things we don't even know where it come from. Huh? That's right. Did, was there any people ever whipped on the plantations that you saw or uh, beat or uh, mistreated? Uh, yeah, well, you know, my dad was mistreated because they'd tell him what he had to do. And what he better do, you know, if he didn't do it, you know, they, they, they would do this and do that to him. But he, I never did see him get beat or nothing, but he was threatened. I know he was threatened a lot. A lot that they would beat him? Yeah, and he, he was just, you know, get up and do it. He was just wet for the night and they, and they had milk cows and everything. He had to milk the cows early in the morning and late at night. He milk the cows after that day, you know, after he come out, out the field. Come in with the black dog uh, later on that night. Uh, how how many children did your, your parents have? She had just two. Your mom had two children. Right. And your mother worked in a big house. She worked out there in the working house. What did she do? She was cooking and uh, ironing and washing and just cleaning the house and doing all that. Just like she was. Baby. And she nursed babies on her breast? She nursed all the white babies. You know, she on kept, her breast? Um, she had two or three she nursed on her breast when she babysit. Um, they were able to go out and she left the children with her. And she had to nurse them on her breast. What was childhood like for you? 
but it, you know, it, it just, I don't know, it, I can't say though. It's, it's just miserable. You ever think about those days now? Oh yeah, I pass by and think about them every day before I go out there. Well, every day I, I'm out there spreading out, look for whatever we can. Bone, you know, raise up and out there. You know, and look so good. And what memories go through your mind when you oh, pass Oh, you know, how my dad went from how he slaved out there and how we slaved out there. And, you know, with this. and how my mama worked out there. She stood on the highway out there. I'm in the morning trying to get to work, you know. Hitchhiking? Hitchhiking, right, on the highway. She was working uptown, and she was going to town, working in the daytime. He had a guy coming to town, Jimmy Swan, a guy called Jimmy Swan. He was working out there, so he had my mom to come to work for him. And she had to hitchhike to work on the highway. And when you think about your mama having to do all that hard work, it's rough. It's rough? It's yeah. rough. Hey. Okay. We get to tell you something. We get to tell you something. Hey, okay, I'm done. I'm not falling so hard. That's just one of the examples as to why I think slavery is so personal. Um, you know, there were a lot of slaves that were like very close to the master by force. You're I'm forcing you to be my slave, my servant, and my friend. You don't have a choice. And if you run away from me, I'll kill you. I mean, there's stories of slaves being hung in front of their families, burnt. I mean, whipped, made a mockery of. It goes on and on. And it also happened for a very long time, over 200 years. 400 years, I believe, I've read that was a myth. I could be wrong. So it was either 400 years or it's 253 years. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. But anywhere from 250 to 400 years is a long fucking time. So it really doesn't matter how long it was. It was a very long fucking time. Like, basically... That's what it is. So I really don't even care what the number is. But if you want to leave it in the comment section, please, by all means. Uh, but there was slavery in North Africa. 1.5 million Christians and Europeans were captured and forced into slavery in North Africa in the 19th century. Who would have thought? You know what I'm saying? Who would have thought? You know, so basically, I think, you know, based on my research, slavery is is class one. If you don't, it's war. So if let's say that, you know, one part of the world comes in and takes over another part of the world, they're going to enslave you so that they that's the only way they can, the what makes a land impenetrable is the people. We can't take your land if you exist and you're not our slaves to do what we want you to do, because now that we own your land, we need you to work for us and take care of because, you know, this land and this is your land. But now you're going to work it for us, not for yourselves anymore, because we want it. So it's pretty much domination. That's what slavery is. And that's why I'm um, it's so worldwide, because it's it's just it's simply just that it's just I'm taking your land and the people with it because I can't take the land if the people are here. So we need to get rid of the people somehow, kill them off or sell them, spread them out, get them out, sell them. People would slave, um, trade slaves for, for goods. Slaves have value. This is a business. It's a business. It's a business. 
So that's why it's a worldwide thing. But back to why the black man in the U.S., the, the, uh, the African slave was different. How easy is it for, you know, a slave master to kill off a generation of people that know where they come from? You know, have them have their kids. They're going to have kids. Let them, let them have kids. All right? So we can raise their kids to be our own slaves. And then when we're done with their parents, we can raise a new generation of black slaves, African-American slaves. Hence the name. All right? Let's make our own breed of slaves. I'm sure they were breeded because there's so many. And then we can do away with them. Take away their parents, take away, break them up, take away everything they know, their culture, their history. They don't need that. They just need to know how to work for us, sharecroppers, etc. You know, again, there was food, clothing, all kinds of reasons why they were very valuable was to work for them and to clean their homes and to build their homes, basically do everything that they didn't want to do. And they did it for free. Which is, brings me to reparations and why blacks feel that reparations are very necessary. I read a document that said, you know, they didn't care about reparations and they think black people are whining about it. And, well, I said to myself, they really don't know black history. And that's the problem. People just don't know the history of it in, in detail. They don't do enough research to know why people are asking for reparations. Their argument is, well, the ancestors are dead. The people are dead that did it. What does it matter? It's just the point. It's just the point. And I believe that other cultures have received reparations financially. I don't know that off the top of my head, but I have to assume I saw it somewhere. I have to do a little more research that. If you know, please put it in the comment section. Thank you. But um, slavery among indigenous people were very popular in Brazil. There were a lot of black slaves in Brazil, Canada, pre-Columbian America, called Mesoamerica. There was human sacrifice that took place. And again, prisoners of war or slaves. So it was a very barbaric time. Uh, most of them will call it uncivilized. <laughs> uh, very different from now, uh, in a sense. Civilized barbarian and uncivilized barbarian. Still barbarian. But it was just very wild back then, I think, and lawless. And um, thank goodness humanity took a turn we still have more turning to go but we've come a far way since slavery and i'm very happy about that i'm happy that i know my parents and my parents know their parents but then it gets dark beyond that you know parents parents and parents parents you know it kind of fades off you really don't know who they are after about three or four generations and that's because well it's hard to find and, well, it didn't matter to people. Nobody cared about your genetic DNA or whatever. They didn't care. It was all just selling people for money, basically, is what slavery was. They have value. And they, black people still have value today. Just, I'm not going to get into it. I did touch on it a little bit in a couple of other podcasts. But, you know, rubber was really big back then. There was a rubber boom in Ecuador, Peru, Colombia, and Brazil, and Central America, which I have family from. My mother's whole side is Costa Rican. So, I mean, I definitely have it in my blood. It's just very hard to find my ancestors. I just found it to be very hard. Um, I'm not going to get into abolition in this podcast. I think it's been, a, it's been about 40 minutes, and I think I'm going to end it here. But I do want to do another podcast on abolition. Thank you for listening. Take me back where